Hello and welcome to the part one of the Scatterplot movies. Um, what's this all about? Um, it's all about critical chain scatterplots, that's a portfolio view. And it's very interesting how to see what happens in such a scatterplot, how the dots are moving um, and what are the reasons for showing some of the patterns. Um, especially there are two questions we want to ask. One is uh, how an underload or an overload of a portfolio looks like and um, how does a scatterplot uh, evolve if uh, you break the CCPM rules. Um, but in the part one it's all about just to show how it works um, and uh, to verify whether it really works in the way we expect. So um, I have to click here. Um, this is a test scenario of a very simple uh, situation or simple portfolio. Um, here are different parameters uh, to set for the simulation. Um, I just give a short introduction. Um, here it's a definition of the projects in this area. You see there's just one project in the portfolio. There are five um, work packages on the critical chain. Uh, it's a duration of 10 days each and the first work package um, needs resource A. From resource A we have a capacity of 1. From resource B we have a capacity of one, uh, B. So it's very clear that if you start at day 1 there's a remaining effort of 50 days and um, the end of the project will be 100 days. Why 100 days, not 50? That's because in this scenario to verify whether the scheduler and the simulation works, we use 100% buffer. Normally you use 50 in critical chain, but uh, to make it easier to see, we use here 100. So that is the definition of the project. That is the definition of the um, capacities you have. And this here is uh, just for the scheduling. Uh, here you see the number of the, of the phase, where it's in, you see which resource is working. Um, here you see the start and the end of the planning and this is set by the simulation, by the scheduler. Uh, that's a current um, estimated time to completion. Afterwards, if I click to run, you see that these numbers are changing. Out of this, the longest critical chain and the buffer consumption is calculated and that will be shown here in the scatter plot of the portfolio and for this one project you will see afterwards um, the curve, the fever curve. Um, there are um, a few more uh, parameters to set. Um, you can set uh, the sleeping time between uh, each of the simulation steps. Um, you see here how much effort is spent per day. Um, it is set to 100 um, in min and max. That means nothing else that each day the resource is really spending one day. If you set here 50 for example, then it's uh, a random um, value between 50 and 100%. That means in that time you consume buffer, but that you will see afterwards. And here it's some um, fluctuation of the estimation, but it sets uh, 200, 102, so you won't see any fluctuations. And that is uh, the priority strategy. We will come to that afterwards. So um, that is everything. Everything is defined. So it must be easy. If I click run, you will see immediately um, how the point is walking towards 100% and because there is every day really 100% of the effort spent um, you will see no buffer consumption. So the next test is the following. We do not spend um, the whole capacity each day so we spend just 50% of it. That means every day um, of work the same amount of buffer is consumed. So I expect that the curve is just going towards 100%. So let's have a look. 
and it's walking up, walking up, walking up, and it comes to the 100%, so the scheduler works as expected. There's one deviation from the expectation. Normally you would expect uh, a straight line, but because of the longest critical chain calculation, um, it is a, a slightly a curve because each time um, the estimated time to completion is increased, though so the progress is decreased a little. But uh, in, that is really in practice, it's done by most of the critical chain softwares like this. Um, but this curve is uh, so irrelevant that in, in practice you don't see any difference at all. So um, that's happy world. Um, and now we will see something else. I will increase the fluctuations. So um, you have um, every day a new estimation um, and the estimation scatters a little. So you will see a reality curve like you are used in critical chain. So you see it's jumping up and down just because uh, the estimations are a little randomized. In the end it's getting smaller and smaller, but after all it comes to uh, nearly 100% buffer consumption, so everything's fine. So that means nothing else, that the scatter plot movie maker is working uh, like predicted with one project. Um, and that's end of part one, so now you know um, um, a little how to use it. And the next step will be more than one projects and dealing with constraints and all the stuff around that. And afterwards, it's coming to critical chain stuff. So uh, that's it for the part one.